everyone, it's Anne here from Anne Makes. Thank you so much for stopping by and welcome to my studio. For those of you who are new here, please remember to subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below in the video or on the Anne Makes in the corner of the screen. And also click on that bell so you will be notified whenever I post a new video. Today, I bring you a sponsored video by Cricut all about the Cricut Maker. I have a bonus project to share with you and if you'd like to see that project and how it how to make one similar to that you'll have to stay tuned till the very end. This video accompanies a post that I have today on www.andmakes.ca all about answering five of the most frequently asked questions about the Cricut Maker. So the first of the five most frequently asked questions that the Cricut creative team receives and that I will answer is, will I use the machine enough to justify the price? Well, as I mentioned in the post, that all depends. It depends on your expectations. It depends on what your intentions are for this machine. If you intend on using this as in addition to perhaps what you already have, the Explore Air 2, be sure that you're not uh, just doubling up on what the Explore Air can already do. That is, if your intention is just to cut papers and cardboards, even some chipboards, acetates, even some fabrics, you're going to be fine with the Explore Air. What the Cricut Maker has that sets it apart from previous models is that it has an adaptive tool system. It is a very unique cutting system in the industry. With the Cricut Maker, which comes with a rotary type of cutting tool, it's a, like a rot rotary blade, The blade turns and cuts through fabrics, felts very easily. It doesn't drag through the fibers. You can also use an accessory called a knife blade, which allows you to cut through thick chipboard, thin woods, aluminum very easily. Very easily, efficiently, and quickly. Other tools that can be purchased separately from the Cricut Maker are the scoring wheel and the double scoring wheel. These are tools that help you create scores in your pro projects for folding purposes. You can use the scoring stylus instead of the scoring wheel, which you can use in the Explore Air or the Maker. What's unique is that the scoring tool that is an addition to the maker is built on a is built similar to the rotary cutter it scores but it doesn't cut and it, it's a wheel so you can use it on different materials it also is available with two little scoring wheels in case you want to make a double line for perhaps making um, a book spine, let's say. Second, and one of the most frequently asked questions about the maker is, what materials can it cut? I think I touched upon that a little bit already, but just to recap, it cuts pretty much everything you can imagine. As long as it is thin enough to get into the machine, which is about two millimeters or more or less two millimeters, uh, thick material it fits in the machine you can cut it now the only thing I would suggest that you don't want to cut with your machine is anything that would be food based or glass many of the Cricut influencers and the creative team and people of the creative team have experimented with the Cricut maker cutting all sorts of fabrics very sheer fabrics to denims to corduroys to woolens 
we've practiced cutting through various types of cardboards, chipboards, corrugated cardboard. We've practiced with different kinds of cords. We've practiced with different kinds of papers. And it's also possible to cut aluminum soda cans, thin, other thin metals. Some people have used it on very thin coppers. It's been used on thin woods. So really, it, it's almost endless what this machine can cut. The third question I'm answering is, can I use my old cartridges? Yes, you can. For those of you who have hung on to those dear old cartridges, fortunately, I know Cricut doesn't make cartridges anymore, but you can still use them. That's right. You might not be able to use them directly on the Cricut Maker, as there is no place <laughs> to plug in a cartridge. However, if you own the cartridge and you've registered it in Cricut Design Space, you can use everything that you've purchased from your cartridge and use your maker to cut it. So all you need to do is to link your cartridges through your account in Cricut Design Space and you will be able to use your Cricut Maker with your old cartridges. There's also a little device called a Cricut Cartridge Adapter that you can use to upload your cartridges through the internet to Cricut Design Space, but you don't plug that into your Maker. <laughs> you can use your Explorer for that or, or, or computer for that. The fourth question I'm answering today is, can I upload my own images? Yes. As long as it's a f what they call a flat JPEG or a um, multi-layer vector file, those can be uploaded to Cricut Design Space. So uh, let's say you take a photograph of a, of a flower um, and you want to cut out that design, you can take your photograph, take the JPEG file of that, that photo you took with your iPhone or, or your, your other device or camera and, and upload it to Cricut Design Space. And then in Cricut Design Space, uh, you can design with it to cut it into any shape and, and design your very own personal project. And finally, the fifth question I am answering is, what kind of DIY projects can I make? Oh my goodness, that one is pretty much anything. If the material you need to make your project fits in the maker and there's a tool to cut it, yeah, then you can make whatever you want. You can use it to make sewing projects. I know people who are using the maker for quilting. You can use it for making soft toys. I know people who have printed out the, cause that's what one of the features of the maker and Cricut Design Space is that with uh, a pen, you can print on fabric the pattern that you need to cut out, let's say your little stuffy doll. And it will also with the rotary blade and the correct mat will cut the fabric pieces. So then all you're left to do is to sew everything together. Let's say you want to make a, uh, I don't know, one of those uh, 3D puzzles out of chipboard or thin balsa wood. You can do that with the maker. You want to make jewelry, leather earrings, let's say. You can do that with the maker. You would like to do a bit of embossing on leather. You can do that. There are so many things that you can do with the Maker that up until now were not possible. Because of its adaptive tool system and the special tools that you can purchase separately, it seems that the possibilities are just about limitless. So, I promised you a bonus project, and here it is. Here's the bonus project. What I did is I designed the a project that would be easy to make and at the same time would kind of show off the features of the maker. So this is what I call an either an ornament or decoration for hol the holidays. 
And what it is, is the first circle is made of chipboard, the second is felt, and the third is acetate. In the next part of the video, I show uh, the tools at work cutting each different type of material. To begin, each material used will require its own maker, cutting system, accessory tool, and mat. Here we will be using a piece of foil acetate, a piece of felt, and a piece of chipboard that is two millimeters thick. We're going to start by making the chipboard circle which will require us to move the little wheels all the way as far as possible to the right as you can. It will also require a strong grip mat which is the purple one and of course a sheet of chipboard. This is a Cricut heavy chipboard that is two millimeters thick, measures 11 by 11 inches. When working with chipboard, it's important to secure it well to your cutting mat with some painter's tape or easily removable type of masking tape. Tape all four edges down to the mat, making sure that the tape does not overlap the edges. You don't want that to get stuck in your machine. Here I'm removing the regular blade from the cutting system and we will be using the knife blade and housing. Here I'm showing you the different mechanism that the Cricut Maker uses. Removing the cap that covers the blade for your protection. As you can see, it is a knife blade, so it is a stronger and wider blade than the regular cutting blade. Here I'm just inserting it into the accessory holder. It's very easy. You open and close the clamp, just close securely, and off you go. Following the instructions provided to you in a design space that you will uh, need your computer or device or laptop for, insert the mat and instruct the maker to proceed with the cutting. Notice how quickly the maker is cutting into the chipboard. Because it is chipboard, it is a thicker material and it will require several passes to cut. As I'm showing you, here's a picture of the uh, laptop screen where it says there, there's about 20 rotations or 20 cuts made into the chipboard to cut the circle. Uh, here I've sped up the video just for sake of time. It, it takes, it does take just about three minutes to cut a, a circle this size, but uh, I had, I sped up the video just uh, not to make it too boring. So I'm showing you how the chipboard comes off very easily. And next you just remove it and get ready to cut the next material which will be a piece of felt. Now I'm showing you that you again use the strong grip mat. Now full disclosure here, I cut a circle once using the regular blade uh, just to show you the difference. Now I'm showing you the better option that I found because this is a piece of regular department store, dollar store type of felt. It is very soft. It is very uh, flexible and flimsy. It is very, it's very different from felt that Cricut makes. Cricut makes a felt that is very stiff and is perfect to use with this strong grip mat. So if you're going to use this type of felt, 
with your Cricut Maker, this is what I recommend. I do recommend that you use the rotary blade as I am showing you here. You will notice there is a quite a difference in the quality of the cut. The circle, the felt circle that I cut using the rotary blade is has a very nice straight edge, but the first circle I cut with the regular blade without having any backing to my felt on the mat left the edges, the edge of the circle, a little jag, bit jagged versus the rotary cutter made it a very nice clean cut. Next, we uh, want to make a circle from the foil acetate. It's important to remove the protective lining from the foil acetate and set it down on the mat with the foil side or the shiny side facing up. It goes into the machine and for this we are using the regular cutting blade. So basically you can cut this type of acetate on the Cricut Maker or its uh, predecessor, the Explore Air 2 and 1 and Explore Air. Now most Cricuts can cut foil acetate. It just may require more than one pass on uh, other Cricuts. With the Maker, there is a specific setting that you can find when you set up design space for foil acetate and it is able to cut the foil acetate in one shot. To make the project, the first thing I did was paint the chipboard in a metallic gold. The next step involves taking the three circles and making holes in them with the eyelets. I'm showing you the eyelets I use. I actually had to use six eyelets because you need to make two holes in each circle, one on the top and one on the bottom, to insert two eyelets. I have a special tool called the crop dial which essentially is a tool that makes holes through just about every type of material, including thick chipboard, very easily, and also has a setting on it that I can change it to to actually set the eyelets afterwards. But of course, you don't need to have such a fancy tool. You can, as long as you make holes in your circles, you can hang them. Adding the eyelets adds a pretty, prettier touch and also makes for more secure holes. But you can make holes with any other tool that you may have and set the eyelets uh, with a regular eyelet setter or a hammer and eyelet setter kit. I'm sorry, I made the holes, I'm inserting the eyelets and I'm doing this to each circle at the top and at the bottom of each circle. So after each material, each circle was cut and eyelets were installed, all I did was use this white and gold string to attach each piece together and I made this little tassel. I also glued a little bow on top just to add to the decoration. I hope I was able to answer some of your most uh, wanted I want to know questions about the Cricut Maker and I hope that you were inspired to try and make some projects on your own. The Cricut Maker just helps make makers out of all of us. Thank you so very much for watching. If you like this video I would so appreciate a thumbs up, please like, please comment, share, and until next time stay crafty. Bye.